you're working you never stop you never stop working you never stop you never stop working even when i don't see it you're working even when i don't feel it you're working you never stop you never stop working you never stop you never stop working even when i don't see it you're working even when i don't feel it you're working you never stop you never stop working you never stop you never stop working even when i don't see it you're working even when i don't feel it you're working you never stop you never stop working you never stop you never stop working Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Come, fill the sanctuary now with your miraculous power. Those that are watching on the live stream, we welcome you wherever you're watching throughout the world. God bless you and welcome to Awesome Church Sydney. We're doing a series, Miracles on Demand. And we are believing for God's outstretched arm just like the book of Acts says, when the apostles prayed that God would stretch out his hand and bring healing and bring signs and bring wonders and bring miracles. We are believing that today is your day for a miracle. Someone, someone get God. Hallelujah. Today's my day. <laughs> Jesus. Woo. Jesus. Sing it out. That is who yes, you are. you're seated I want to share some testimonies every week there are testimonies of God's miracle power Amen. this is from a member of our church this is a triple testimony Wow! <laughs> for the many members and pastors who have been praying this time this lady I won't say her name got COVID early this year she was unvaccinated and multiple doctors told her she would die if she got it, COVID. She survived <laughs> and was very well. Wait a second. She had a heart attack two weeks later. <laughs> Far out. But because of her history with brain aneurysm, good Lord, she couldn't have any invasive surgery or tests done. They managed her symptoms with medication while we all prayed. She was released and was well. This, this lady had some blood tests done to check on her liver after all the medications and also on her kidneys, which were on the verge of dialysis prior to COVID. And we're talking about a sick woman here. The doctor called her in for her results and said to her, you are a unique case. And I, and I will actually need to review your case with other doctors. <laughs> he said, your liver is fine and all your blood work is fine and your kidneys have returned to full function. <laughs> <laughs> Glory! <laughs> and he said, the doctor said, I don't understand what is going on. <laughs> But you don't need dialysis. Amen! <laughs> wow. Praise God. Glory! Woo. 
That's a serious that miracle. That is awesome. That is serious. Wow. He, here's another one to do with provision. Because how many people know Jesus saves, heals, delivered, but he provides? Amen. Come on, Jehovah Jireh, my yeah, provider. provider. So this is, I, we're sharing this, and, 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 and can I say, Malena, wonderful message Amen. for the time. Amen. Yeah. Our tithe is the Rottweiler. It rebukes the devourer. Come on. Yeah, I love that. The world so is wanting everyone to panic right now. Right. But not in the kingdom not of God. Us. Amen. Not us. Hallelujah. There's no recession in the kingdom Amen. of God. Amen. Keep your eyes, listen, keep your eyes on the word right now in this season. Hi, Pastor Gary and Awesome Church. This is another member of our church. I must share my three miracle praise Woo! reports. So a couple of weeks ago, wow. I distinctly remember the Lord put in my heart the scripture you said at church, Proverbs 10, 22. Everyone should know that off by heart. Yes. The, the blessing, blessing of, of the Lord, Lord makes, makes one rich, rich and he adds no, no sorrow, sorrow with, with it. it. I didn't know this scripture off by heart. However, I started declaring it often and at every chance. Now, at the same time, the Lord's Spirit has been moving with prophetic words of gold in abundance. Remember wow, that? Gold yes. in abundance. I spoke that out. And the prophetic word of miracles and abundance being our covenant right. Well, long story short, I've had a small commercial property overseas on sale for seven years, stagnant with no action. And after six months of paperwork and preparation, it is now officially finalized and sold. Woo! The check is on its way. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> the, the other miracle is my new boss of only eight months informed, informally requested to see me last week and unbeknownst to me, offered me a pay rise. Woo! The biggest <laughs> raise I have ever gotten. Glory Woo! to God. <laughs> Never did I imagine being offered a six-digit paycheck. Woo! And my third miracle is there's that I, more. There's more. Here's the third one. My third miracle is that I have been praying over and anointing the townhouse across the complex since it has been on sale for a lengthy period of time. Isn't that amazing? She's been anointing the townhouse. Yeah. Um, Faith needs action. Yes. Yeah. Due to previous noisy neighbors, <laughs> we have been hoping and praying for peaceful new owners. And lo and behold, I met them just before coming to prayer night on Wednesday. And it turns out they are born again, spirit-filled Christians. We were both glorifying Amen. the Lord, sharing our testimonies about how they were praying for this perfect home we were praying for. And they're actually pastors. Wow. So she anointed that townhouse with noisy neighbors. They were evicted Woo. and a pastor's moved in. Wow. And she says, Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. I want to encourage Awesome Church to keep on praying. Amen. Keep on believing. Amen. Keep on declaring. Amen. And keep on claiming. Amen. Because God is faithful. God is faithful. Hallelujah. That is wow. So cool. That is so awesome. Come on. I, I just lift your hands to yes, heaven right now. Thank Lisa, you, Lord. I want you to pray. Thank you, Father. Abundance and excess of financial blessing Thank you, and Lord. prosperity because it is Thank a covenant you, Lord. right. It is your right Thank as a child you, Lord. of God. Release that now Thank over Thank you, Lord. Lives. Father, I release the windows of heaven yes. to be opened yes. now yes. in the name of Jesus Christ. The floodgates are open. Oh. In Jesus' name, receive His abundance. Receive His provision. Receive answers. Receive. Receive in Jesus' name. Jesus. Receive new clientele. Receive new uh, contracts. Receive new work. Receive employment. Receive in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 Listen to me, church. You Hallelujah. Come, you come to church to get a word from the men of God. Yeah, that's right. My, my responsibility is to make sure that the Lord's sheep are looked after. Amen. And God, 
gives me words prophetically to release over your lives. And I want to say to you as your shepherd in this season, right? Listen, I've been through three recessions. I've been through three periods, shows my age, (laughs) of high inflation and numbers and, you know, the media going crazy, spooking people. I mean, I was watching the news the other night and the type of words they used, you know, this, this, this reporter got on and she was saying, there was bloodshed on Wall Street. There was, you know, a catastrophe in the, you know, the markets. All these words of like doom and gloom. And for five minutes, they showed this whole story that anyone watching it would have been in a panic. And then at the end of the story, she says, but on Monday when the markets resume, we believe that it'll all bounce back. <laughs> right. You see? Right. To get people to watch, they used fear. But then right at the end she goes, oh, but it'll all be back to normal on Monday. Right. And I want to say to you, listen carefully, here's a word. Meditate. Meditate on Malachi chapter 3, verses 10 to 14. Amen. The scriptures that Pastor Melinda shared. Meditate on that when you get home. Your tithe is your protection. Amen. The Bible says that God will rebuke the devourer. Amen. I have been tithing every Sunday for 36 years. Amen. The only Sunday I never tithed was the Sunday I got saved. I didn't even know what it was. But the following Sunday I doubled up. Now I'm saying this for your benefit, for your protection. Amen. You know, I had someone come to me the other day and they said, well, you know, Pastor Gary, you don't know my situation at work. I'm on a, I'm on a set salary. How, how's God going to get it to me? My youngest <laughs> daughter, who's still in high school, she tithes. She doesn't work. She just gets money, you know, from mum and dad or different, you know, family members or whatever. And she tithes into the house of God. Do you know, she tithed into the house of God and she believed and said, well, I just believe God. I believe what you say. You're my dad. You say it. I believe it. Amen. Her grandfather comes last week, two weeks ago, with this big bag. <laughs> he doesn't know anything about A this. A heavy bag. A heavy bag. <laughs> I, I looked, I went, hey, Paul, what, what, what have you got in the bags? Gary, come and help me. I need to take this bag <laughs> in the house. What have you got in there? Because, you know, every Sunday he brings lots of things for Lisa and I. And, and I'm thinking, wow, glory to God, what is this? <laughs> he said, they're all, tin, they're all tin cans filled with all of his loose change. And he's got a lot of loose change. Because I mean, like, <laughs> this is heavy. He says, oh, this is, this, you know, this is for the girls, you know. So Lisa brings it to the bank. There's over $1,500 in cash in those coins. And Lisa goes home and says, Charlotte, this is for you. Woo! (laughs) Don't worry, Jess got some too. (laughs) Don't tell me God can't get it to you. God has a million ways Amen. of getting provision right. into your life. Hallelujah. He's got a million ways That's right. to get provision into your Amen. life. Amen. You just got to obey the word. Hallelujah. Now, I'm saying all of that. That's not my message today. Amen. I'm saying that under the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Amen. That you rest in God. You rest. You tithe, you rest in the word. Amen. You just let God be God and you yeah. watch what's going to happen in this season. Amen. The world may be going down, but the kingdom of God is going up. Oh, Thank you, Lord. We receive it. Hallelujah. We're going up. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank God for faithful grandfathers. Thank God. It's all those loose coins. <laughs> if you've got That's loose up. dollars, Paul, you bring them right here. <laughs> God bless you. You may be seated. Thank you, worship team. Miracles on Demand, part three. Come on, someone. Oh, come on, someone. You know what it is? It's too hot in here, Giselle. I think you need to bring the heat down. People are yawning down there. It's getting a bit warm in here. So you can't use that excuse. It's too cold to go to church. Hallelujah. Is it nice? How many people feel nice in here? Cozy. Yeah. They feel cozy. Hallelujah. 
Glory to God. Man, I feel his presence yes, here today. Lord. Thank Come you, on, just Father. lift your hands to heaven. Because yes, I, I just pray in the spirit for a moment right now. Come on, come on, pray in the spirit. Come on. I, I just feel like people have want to go home. It's like... See, when there's faith in the room, God will do a miracle. I'll tell you what, I wouldn't walk down the streets late at night without a rottweiler. And I wouldn't want to be going into a recession or a high inflation season knowing I don't have my tithe in the kingdom. I'll tell you that much. You know, that's just, that's just Bible. Hallelujah. Miracles on Demand, part three. Awesome church. And if you're visiting today, God bless you. Great to have you here. If you're watching for the first time on the live stream, God bless you. I want you to know something. Awesome church is a book of Acts church. In other words, we are a continuation of the book of Acts of the Holy Spirit. When you read the book of Acts and come to Awesome Church, you're going to see the same thing you read last night. In Acts 5 verse 12, the apostles were performing many miraculous signs and wonders among the people. And all the believers were meeting regularly at the temple in the area known as Solomon's Colonnade. Well, are we not awesome church, the temple at Rydalmere Colonnade? In Acts 5 verse 14, yet more and more people believed and were brought to the Lord crowds of both men and women. I'm just, I was looking outside my office today while some of the pastors, the executive pastors were in my office and we were just looking out my window and you could just see all the cars streaming into the car park. And, and at one point the streets like lined up with all the cars. They're all coming to Awesome Church. More people believed and were brought to the Lord. Come on, crowds of both men and women as a result of the apostles' work. Sick people were brought out into the streets on beds and mats, so that Peter's shadow might fall across some of them as he went by. Crowds came from the villages around Jerusalem, bringing their sick and those possessed by evil spirits, and they were all healed, praise God. They had Deliverance Day every Sunday at the awesome church in Jerusalem. Next Sunday is our next D-Day, glory to God. And it's titled, Binding the Strong Man. Now, Jesus spoke about this. He said that unless the strong man is bound, you cannot go in and plunder the goods of that home. Now, that strong man is in charge of a gang of demonic spirits. He spoke about that in the Gospel of Matthew. He said, demons go out, they gather gangs and they come back. So unless that strong man, I believe there's always one demonic spirit that's like the strong man in that person's life. Unless that strong man is bound, come on, those that are watching the live stream, listen. Unless that strong man is bound, you can't minister and get the other demon spirits that are lurking in that person's life so that that person can be completely released. So next Sunday, I'm going to show you what are the strong man demons teach you about what they are. So it's a wonderful opportunity to invite people along that you know that are struggling, sickness, fears, oppressions, depressions, uh, addictions, whatever it might be. You bring them to church next Sunday. You tell them next Sunday is going to be a teaching just for you. Those watching the live stream, I want to encourage you, get to church next Sunday morning at 10 a.m. It is going to be, I believe, the best D-Day we've ever had, and we've had a lot. So that's happening next Sunday, exactly like the book of Acts. Hebrews 2 verse 4 says this, And God, come on, confirmed the message 
by giving signs and wonders and various miracles and gifts of the Holy Spirit whenever he chose. The Passion Bible says it like this. Then God added to his witness to theirs. He validated their ministry with signs, astonishing wonders, all kinds of powerful miracles, and by the gifts of the Holy Spirit, which he distributed as he desires. Father, I pray that you will validate my ministry with signs, astonishing wonders, all kinds of powerful miracles, and by the gifts of the Holy Spirit for your people in Jesus' name. Come on, someone. Miracles in the Bible, in the Bible, miracles fall into one of these categories. And whatever's in the Word, we can believe for it. Miracles fall into these categories. Number one, category, salvation. People being saved. Healing, people being healed. Delivered, people being delivered. And provision, people being provided for. Miraculously. Miraculously. So... A miracle of salvation is where a person, come on, feels lost, separated or disillusioned with life and is ready to give up. But God intervenes and rescues that person into new life with Christ. Now, I know there are many people in this sanctuary today where that happened. I mean, I was sharing my testimony last night at, 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 at an engagement party uh, in, in, with those that were si si seated there, and I was sharing how I had, and Lisa said to me, she said, you need to share this. You need to share these stories, and you need to share what God did for you. And we were talking about angels, and, and Sandra, our keyboarder, said that a couple of weeks back she was over here, I believe. Was that the spot, Sandra, over there on the left side, on that side? Over, that's the right side. Uh, your left, my right. And she said that she saw an angel during the ministry time. This, the, Sandra, come up here and tell us what you saw because, uh, you know, people need, to, people need to hear this stuff uh, because, you know, some people go looking for uh, statues. Uh, I look for angels. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, tell us what you saw. Where was it? Um, just right here. What happened? Um, well, during the altar call, um, I was praying and um, with everyone else, and um, I just felt a prayer rise up in my in my heart to say, "Lord, let me see what they look like," because I could feel the angelic presence and the Holy Spirit. I mean, everyone could, and um, and then from the side of my eye, peripheral, peripheral how do you say that? Peripheral, peripheral vision. vision. Yeah. Yeah, I saw um, a man, he was dressed in white and, um, and then I turned around slowly to look at him and, his, and I could see his face and um, he, was, he had a, a, a cloak over his um, head and he, was, he had long sleeves and in a long white gown and uh, I could see his face clearly, in fact I was just staring at his face while he was staring toward the podium and toward Pastor Gary. So he was looking this way and I was looking at him. And I was, I uh, honestly can't say if I had my eyes open or closed because it was just like, wow. Um, and he had a dark brown beard, very short beard and dark brown eyes. And he had a perfect olive uh, uh, skin complexion. And um, he just, yeah, he was just um, just sitting and his gaze, or I don't know if you're sitting or standing really, but his gaze was toward there and, um, and it was Praise just amazing. God. Yeah. Praise God. Thank yeah. you for sharing that. That is wonderful. You know, there's an angel over every church. There's an angel over every church. Read the book of Revelations. Um, you know, but when she said beard and olive skin, I'm thinking, was that Jesus? I mean, I, look, I don't know. But Revelation says he walks through churches. He, he checks churches out. He sees what's going on. And he was checking me out. I mean, he was staring at me. So he was, what's this pastor? What are you doing? You know, yes, he's my boss, right? Salvation is a powerful, powerful experience. Now, Eric, where are you, my brother? Eric, come up here, brother. 
Quickly come up here. I want you to hear just a quick testimony from our brother Eric of salvation, of what God can do. Bless you, my brother. You. Uh, morning, church. Uh, my name's Eric. And um, in the year 2000, I think it was the lockdown, 2020. Um, um, so before I came, I, I've always believed in Jesus, but I wasn't like, I had my, my feet totally in the world. Like, I was not like, you know. And then something happened in 2020, um, you know, the, the lockdown. And I felt the Lord calling me, you know, like um, calling me to, you know, to, to serve him. And um, my heart was had to be broken by God, you know, like, he had to let me, my heart get broken um, for me to, to seek his face, and yeah, I just, um, I gave my life to the Lord, um, he changed me, I used to be really addicted to drugs, I was smoke, smoking, alcohol, I had bad friends, and yeah, he came in and um, supernaturally changed me, Praise I gave my God. life to him, and, Praise and God. Uh, smoking for 20 years, I was addicted to drugs, and completely gone, the desire, the, the smoke, gone. Gone. Smoking gone. Smoking drugs gone. Drugs gone. Drugs gone. Supernatural. It's just Look. something I couldn't do. Like, He's glowing. He's yeah. glowing. So Look at something, that. Something I couldn't do. Um, you know, I always ask the Lord, Lord, you know, I really want to do this, like, get off the drugs. But I was, I was like, half-hearted. But then when, he, when my house was broken, that's when I thought to him, you know, Praise I'll give my whole God. life to you. That's when everything changed. Praise so, yeah. God, brother. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Just I wanted to encourage anyone that's gone through um, addictions as well, you know. I mean, never too far. And Jesus loves you, you know. Just go to him and um, he'll change you, you know. Beautiful. You Beautiful. Don't, you don't do the changes, Jesus does. Amen. And, and you're here with your whole family yeah, now, your wife, your, wife yeah. your kids, and you're just loving Jesus. And how awesome yeah. is that? Stand up. Where's your beautiful family? Stand up, beautiful family, your wife. There they are. God bless you. Thank you, my brother. Thank you, Eric. That's a miracle of salvation. Just go and talk to him and he'll tell you. It was a miracle. But then there's miracles of healing. Healing is where a person has lost hope and is suffering to the point where they just don't know what to do anymore. But God intervenes and restores that person physically into divine health with Christ. Now, Ashley, come up here quickly. Come up here quickly. Now, I remember you sharing this with me a few weeks back, and it is powerful, and I want you to share this testimony of what happened when you got prayed for for healing. Yeah, okay, so I was actually born with my right leg shorter than my left leg, um, which caused bad back pain for, like, a lot of years. So I'd go into the chiropractor once a week for three years in a row, which obviously did not help. Um, he would have to pop my leg out, which would leave the back pain to go for a day, and um, obviously, yeah, it did not work. So I was at Pastor Bianca's house, and she got a word of knowledge. It was really random because no one asks this. But she goes, do you have a left leg like rather than your... I mean, do you have a shorter leg than the other one? And I was like, yeah, how would you know? And then she was like, all right, let's pray. So I sat down. She had my legs in her hand. And she spoke the most simple words. And all she said was, legs align in Jesus' name. And instantly my legs aligned in her hands. And um, I stood up and the back pain was gone. So that was it. No more chiropractor. Do, do, do you still go to the chiropractor? No, I haven't seen him since. <laughs> Thank you. Wonderful. Healings. Then there's also the miracle of deliverance. This is where a person is bound with oppression, depression, or an evil spirit, keeping them imprisoned in their soul. But God intervenes and releases that person into, come on, freedom with Christ. Now, Rosie, come up here. I want Rosie to share this testimony of what happened. And, um, and uh, you know, let me tell you, uh, I remember the day you and your lovely husband came to stand up, uh, uh, right, Graham, and uh, these wonderful people. I remember the day you walked into the church and I could see, I mean, you are a different person I just when I see you. You're a different person. Yeah, so you tell us the story, what happened. Okay, well, I've been walking with the Lord for a long time, and but stupidly, last year, through all the COVID chaos, I kind of took my eyes off the Lord a bit and started to look at all the, the bad news that was going on. I was watching the bad news. Yeah. Sorry, Pastor Gary. Right. A lot of people were. And uh, <laughs> there was a lot of stuff going on. I wasn't frightened at the start of COVID, but then I just it just got on top of me. Um, there was a lot of controls, a lot of loss of freedom. I gave up my 45-year career in nursing. 
Um, and then I kind of had a void in my life and I just was watching more bad news. By the end of the year, early January, I just slid down this horrible slippery slope into a dark abyss of just despair, fear and, and oppression, anxiety. Uh, the doctor had put me on. I couldn't sleep. I couldn't eat. I couldn't look up. I just kept looking at the floor. I was frightened to go out. Um, I was frightened when Graham left the room. I was frightened on my own and it was horrible. Um, and I'd known the miracles of God in the past, and I, but I just could not get myself out. The doctor put me on um, sleeping pills, anti-anxiety pills. And then, praise God, someone told us about Awesome Church. And we rang Pastor Melaine, it was so beautiful, on the other end and prayed. And then, you know, I came here. I did D-Day, so do D-Day if you need it out there. Um, and God just delivered me from that spirit of fear. <laughs> And, and then, of course, I've had to do the hard work since of just, you know, um, maintaining that through knowing his love, his perfect love, speaking the word, taking hold of his word. But look what he's done. And if he's done it for me, he can do it for anyone oh, out there. So, you know, any time I get fearful, I just stop and go, no, hang on. I've read the end of the book. We win. Yes. Hello. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah. Can, can I tell you, when I met her, I mean, she was... She was bent over. She was cowering. She was like, couldn't even look at me. And I was, remember talking to her husband. I'm thinking, dear Jesus. And she came to the altar and I knew, I could see there was, there was some really demonic stuff happening. Yep. When I look at her now, mm. uh, it, it's a testimony yep. Yep. of what God can do. That's right. And, uh, you know, yep. they're at church yep. every Sunday, at the prayer meetings every Wednesday. They're at connect groups, hungry for God, yep. this new passion yep. for the yep. Lord. Yeah. And I tell you what, the devil doesn't want to come near me no more. Amen. Okay? Amen. Woo. Praise God. Awesome. But then there is the miracle of provision. This is where a person is desperately in need. But God intervenes and replenishes, come on, that person so that nothing is left wanting. Now, Rebecca, come up here and share your testimony about this story of provision. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. So, you know, I've been building for about two and a half years now, and um, I've had all the trouble you could have. Anything that could go wrong has gone wrong. And I was, even though God was sustaining me through the last two and a half years, sending people to help me, sermons, scriptures, I started to grow really weary and I remember talking to Pastor Elizabeth actually um, a few Thursdays ago and I said to her, I can't do this anymore, I just can't do it. I was crying, I had migraines, I was just, I just couldn't continue on and she said, yes you can, yes you can, you just get yourself together. She prayed with me and then later that week was the first week that you started the uh, Miracles on Demand course. Yep. And apparently I was the first at the altar, I didn't realise, but I ran to the front, I needed a miracle. I knew I just needed God to help me because it was a big tangled mess. Um, it, it was like a, a set of life circumstances all converging this month. My job is finishing, my project needs to finish, but it can't. I need OC and I couldn't get it, the builder's nowhere to be found. Like so many things were going wrong and I just said, Lord, I need a miracle and I pressed in and I think I felt the shift straight away. And the shift was in me to realise that I had to align back to God's truth, okay? God's word and God's truth, which, which said that, yes, I can do it. And, um, and then suddenly, that week, everything just started coming together. P people were just appearing out of nowhere. Things were happening. And this house, if you see it, it it's nowhere near finished. However, this PCA came and he... Um, he, he noticed all these things that were wrong. But, at, but the next day, he, he gave me the OC for, for, for one of the houses, which means that we're not going to be homeless in two weeks. We've got somewhere to live. Um, even though I don't have a job yet and I don't know where my next dollar's coming from, I know that the, my God shall supply yes, all my needs amen. according to his riches in glory. Hallelujah. 
So if you are struggling with anything, um, just run to the altar today when Pastor Gary opens up because you need to press in to get your yeah, miracle. that's right. God just doesn't do it for you. You've got to participate. You've yeah, got to press on. in. You've got to that's believe. Right. You've got to say the right words. You've got to watch what you say. You've got to speak God's word over yeah. your life. Yeah. And he will do everything else in Hallelujah. Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise God. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. Wow, 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 wow. There are many examples of God supernaturally intervening to bring about salvation, healing, deliverance, and provision. In other words, God rescuing, restoring, releasing, replenishing supernaturally. Why? To show that He is Almighty God. When we stop believing... You see, that's why God in the Old Testament had 12 covenant names. And each covenant name represented an attribute of who he, who he is, His nature. And it was a reminder to the children of Israel, this is who I am. I am who I am for what you need me to be in that situation. But today, most believers have... have they, 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 it's like they're worshipping this imp impotent icon and, and they devoid of any power. But that's what religion does. But, but real spirituality and real Christianity understands, come on, that the God we, I mean, He rose from the dead. The God we serve is the miraculous God of all creation. And unless a preacher preaches about what God can do, the people will never believe what God can do. Listen, in the book of Numbers, there were 12 spies that went into, you know, Canaan land to spy out the land. The Bible says that 12 spies came back to Moses. Ten of them said, well, you know what? There, there are giants in that land. You know, we're just grasshoppers. You know, they'll defeat us. We can't go in there. We can't have victory. And so the people that heard the 10 of those 12 spies say that, they got disheartened. That's just like some preachers today who keep giving a negative report about the God that we serve. But Joshua and Caleb, the Bible said, had a different spirit. They said, Moses, we can go in there right now and we can take possession of the land right now. They had a different spirit. What we need today are preachers with the Joshua and Caleb spirit that say, church, I know it doesn't look good out there. Church, I know what the world is saying, but we are the church of Jesus Christ. And the Bible says, the gates of hell, come on, shall not prevail against the Lord. Hallelujah. That's us. So church, I'm saying to you, let's go and cross over to the other side. Let's go. Let's go and get our salvation. Let's get our healing. Let's get our deliverance. Let's get our provision. Let's get the land of milk and honey. That belongs to the children of God. Belongs to us. Hallelujah. We don't need more dead religion. We don't need more traditions of men. We need miracles on demand. And God is ready to do those miracles. He just needs, come on, faith. He just needs people that will believe. Glory to God. Sit down. Glory to God. Oh, whatever you focus on, you gain more faith. To I mean, can I just preach this morning? Whatever you focus on, you gain more faith to believe for it. Because faith comes. If I can just get some faith into you, the miracles will flow. Romans 10, 17 says, so then, come on, read it with me. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So once you hear the Word of God, it's time for you to activate that faith. Because faith is acting on the Word. Never forget that. Faith is acting on God's Word. Never forget that. It's greater than simply believing. Or saying, I believe, Pastor. To believe means to take true facts presented. But to have faith means you are acting on the Word of God. Acting on the Word of God. Once you get a hold of that, you will see things change. These testimonies which you just heard this morning are not just stories. But they are 
spiritual warfare declarations. You, you, you've got to catch that. When, when you share your testimony, you're not just sharing a story. I didn't get these people up here to share a story. I got them up here so that you could hear their story, but I also got them up because by them getting up and making a testimony, they are, they are, in, they are, they are, they are, it's a spiritual warfare declaration to the devil that says, my God is greater. Revelations 12, 11 says, come on, and they overcame him, the devil, by the blood of the lamb and by what? The word of their testimony. I like how the NLT says it. It says, and they have defeated him by the blood of the lamb and by their testimony. Every time you declare the grace and goodness of God in your life, you're making the devil mad and the angels rejoice. Your testimony is your validation of the power of God at work in your life. So share it. Hallelujah. And what you need to know is that if God did it for one person, he'll do it for you. Because God is no respecter of persons. God only respects faith. And when he sees faith, miracles manifest. What, 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 what did I just say? When he sees, come on, when he sees miracles manifest. I, when he sees faith, and you know, faith can be seen. Look at this, Mark 2, verse 2. Immediately, many gathered together so that there was no longer room to receive them, not even near the door. And Jesus preached the word to them. Then they came to him, bringing a paralytic who was carried by four men. And when they could not come near him because of the crowd, they uncovered the roof where he was. So when they had broken through, they let down the bed of which the paralytic was lying. Now look at verse 5. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven you. Verse 11 says, I say to you, arise, take up your bed and go to your house. Immediately he arose, took up the bed and went out in the presence of them all so that all were amazed and glorified God saying, we have never seen anything like this before. Glory to God. What we've seen is it's, it's people turn up and say, there's no parking, let's go home. Let, uh, you know, I can't get in, there's no more seats, so let's just, let's just go home. No, these four people said, we can't get in, that's all right, we'll just break a hole in the roof and we'll just lower this guy. Can you imagine Jesus preaching and then all of a sudden he looks up and all of a sudden this guy on a stretcher is being lowered down. Just picture that for a moment. This was the tenacity of those four men who said, we're going to get our brother healed. When Jesus saw that, he went and said, praise God. And he said, he said, he said, you know what? He saw the faith. He said, get up and walk. And that man got up and he walked. What, did, what happened there? Faith released that miracle. The men's faith released that miracle for Jesus. When you come to church, you ought to come ready to praise, ready to worship with an expectation. You ought to be sitting there, you know, on the edge of your seat. When the pastor goes, praise God, you jump up and say, hallelujah. You've got faith just oozing out of you. Well, pastor, that's just emotionalism. Well, so what? A bit of emotion wouldn't hurt you. Faith, when he sees faith. Faith. Someone say faith. faith. If you believe it, you'll see it. If you expect it, you'll experience it. If you demand it, you'll see it manifest. Listen, God would never have put in his word something that he doesn't mean. If it's in the book, then I've got a right to believe for it. John eleven forty. 40, Jesus said to her, did I not say to you, come on, that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God. You'll see the glory of God. 
only unbelief and doubt will stop this. Only unbelief and doubt will stop this. And can I tell you, what we need is the glory of God. We need the glory of God. Because when the glory of God comes, listen, everything changes. And without the glory of God, you're on your own. God didn't send the children of Israel into the wilderness alone. Come on. It was a pillar of fire by night. It was a cloud of glory by day. He accompanied them. The glory was with them all the way until they inherited the promises. What did Jesus say? I will never leave you nor forsake you. That glory is on you right now. Glory to God. Touch that glory right now. Glory, the glory of God. Everything changes. And without the glory of God, you're on your own. You have to toil. You have to strive. You have to stress just to get ahead in life. And there are plenty of people living like that. There are plenty of believers living like that. The glory of God is referred to many times in the Holy Bible. But what is the glory of God? In the Old Testament, the presence of God was visibly evidenced as the Shekinah, Hebrew Shekinah, or manifest presence of God, the glory of God, appearing as a light over the Ark of the Covenant in the Holy of Holies. Have a look at this picture. The Holy of Holies was in the Ark of the Covenant. The high priest would go into the tabernacle and only he was allowed. He would apply the blood on the mercy seat and then the Shekinah would appear like a cloud of glory, like a light hovering over the two cherubim angels. And the priest would then evoke forgiveness over Israel and the Spirit of God would be, begin to communicate with the high priest's messages for the children of Israel. That's the glory of God that we see in the Old Testament. But once a year, that high priest would visit and experience the glory of God. Once a year, that was it. But in the New Testament, God's glory is revealed primarily through His Son, Jesus Christ. John 1.14 says, And the Word, come on, became flesh and dwelt amongst us, and we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and of truth. But can I tell you something? We as a church experienced the glory of God in August 2017. Many of you were there when it happened. And I know that I've shared about it and I'm going to continue sharing about it because you can't experience the glory of God and not be changed. When people come to me and they say, I saw the glory of God. If you saw the glory of God, it would change you. A dramatic change. So in August 2017, that whole year, we had, a, we, had a, we had a visit from Dr. Bill Winston in October 2016. Do you remember that day? You can watch it on YouTube when he ministered at our church, the great minister of the gospel. And he gave me a word. M many of you were there when he gave it to me. He gave me the word of the blessing. He said, study the blessing. He said, you need to know the blessing. Bring the blessing to the house of God. So in 2016, the theme of that year was the blessing of God. And I began preaching the blessing of God, the blessing of God, the blessing of Abraham, the blessing of God eradicates the curse. The blessing of God comes upon every person who repents of their sins and accepts Jesus Christ. Galatians 3, 14, 13 and 14. I kept preaching, preaching, preaching. Then on one Sunday in August, in August, David Winston, Dr. Bill Winston's son with his wife came to our church. And they were in the front row. And I got up and we were worshipping. And all of a sudden, I looked up and I saw the, a cloud in the, in, the, in the ceiling of the... We were in a theatre in Five Dock. I saw this cloud and it started descending down like this. And I'm standing there. The congregation, their hands are lifted up. Their eyes are closed. They've got, they, don't, they can't see anything. They don't even know what's going on. And for a moment, I'm just... I'm a stunned mullet. And I'm just standing there looking at this thing and I'm, and I'm seeing this happen. 
And I'm thinking, this ain't smoke machines, this isn't lighting effects. This, we, well, listen, there was an old theatre, we didn't have anything like that. It wasn't as nice as this place. It was charming, but, you know, I'm looking up. So I grabbed my phone that was on, my, on, 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 on the lectern, and I took a photo of it. And I've got that photo, and I want to show it to you, for those that have never seen it, that you can see the cloud. There it is right there. There it is right there. That descended on the congregation. The following Sunday, it happened again. We got another photo. There it was again. That glory was just filling the temple. When that glory came, after that first week, the second week, I, I went away to fast and pray to seek God. I said, Lord, what, what is this? What's happening? Because when the glory of God comes to you, it changes you. And the Spirit of God spoke to me during those days of praying and fasting. He said, Gary, I want you to know something. I've graced you with an anointing, a specific anointing. And this specific anointing, come back to me, that specific anointing that I've graced you with is to bring salvation, healing, deliverance, and provision to my sheep. To my sheep. You see... In the letter of Timothy, in the letter of Titus, they're written and they have the instructions of elders in a church. They tell elders how to be, what an elder must be. You can read it and that will tell you what an elder must be. But it doesn't tell you what an elder must do. To know what an elder must do, you've got to go to the gospel of St. Matthew. You've got to go to Matthew chapter 10. And when you go to Matthew chapter 10, that's the great chapter for ministers on what Jesus expects ministry to do. Now in Matthew 10, pick it up right here in verse 5. This is what the Lord said to me. He said, these 12 Jesus sent out and commanded them saying, watch this. Do not go into the way of the Gentiles. A Gentile is a non-Jew. It's a non-believer. God is saying, don't go to unbelievers. Do not go into the way of the Gentiles and do not enter a city of the Samaritans. They're unbelievers. And Jesus is saying to the apostles, don't go to unbelievers. Now that might shock some of you. Maybe you've not read that. But that's exactly what Jesus is saying. Don't go to unbelievers. He said, I want you to go to my sheep. Look at the next verse. But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. These are believers that are bound. Believers that are sick. Believers that are poor. Believers that are confused. Believers that are depressed. That are oppressed. That are being demonized. And there are plenty of believers who love Jesus, but they're lost. And they're lost because in most churches today, they're not, it, the, the ministry of deliverance and healing and miracles is just not being taught. And so people wallow away in their misery. And Jesus said in the next verse, verse 7, this is what he told me. And as you go to the lost sheep, preach, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now I'm a shepherd. That's my fourfold ministry gift. I'm not an evangelist. I'm not a prophet. I'm not one that goes out to the lost souls. Lost souls are people who don't know Jesus at all. What God is, and you need to hear this as your senior pastor, because we have ministries that are out there ministering to lost souls. But God raised me up for the lost sheep. Wow. You got to know that's my anointing, that's my gifting. Some of you are gifted in other areas, but my anointing is right here in the house as a shepherd loving the children of God and what? Doing what Jesus said to do in verse 8. Come on. Heal the sick. Cleanse the lepers. Raise the dead. Cast out demons. Come on, someone. Freely you have received. Freely give. Now, he spoke that to me, and he said to me in August 2017, he said, if you stay and obey what I've commanded you to do, I said, Lord, preach this every Sunday. I mean, I've got to preach. If you preach this, I'll give you everything you need. I'll give you a building. I'll give you the finances to make that building come to pass. I'll give you the people. I'll surround you with everything you need for you to fulfill the vision that I've planted in your soul. Because when the glory comes, it changes you. Amen. And the Lord said to me so clearly, He said, if you divert away from that, 
If you divert away from that, I will, re- I will lift my anointing off you. And you'll be ministering under a different anointing. Stay on that. That's what I've graced awesome church to do. That's our grace. That's our anointing. And people of God, you need to know that. Those watching the live stream, that's what God's graced us to do. We may not do what the church down the road does. We may not do the church that you used to go to and you were in love with, but you know the glory wasn't there and you came here and you love it here now. Don't come to me and say, well, at our old church, you know, we used to do this. You're not at your old church any longer. You're now at awesome church. And we got to flow, come on, with the glory. And let me tell you, the miracles that you're seeing, the growth, the increase, the blessing that's on this church, you get established in this church, you get planted in this church, you're going to see the river of that blessing flow into your life. Because that's the anointing that's on this church. It's an anointing for lost sheep. There are plenty of lost sheep lost ministers, lost leaders that have come here to be healed, to be delivered, to be released, and they've gone back into the mission field whole again because of what we were doing with our D-days and our ministry days and everything else that needs to happen. Someone give God praise this morning. Come on. Worship team could come up, please. Man, oh man i got so much to share. I, didn't, I really didn't even preach much of my message today. Oh, Holy Spirit. When a person comes to Christ, they experience His glory in their lives. And as we deepen our relationship with Jesus, the glory of God, it increases in our lives. How many people want the glory to increase? Look at this scripture, 2 Corinthians 4, 6. For God who said, let there be light in the darkness, has made this light, that same light, shine, come on, in our hearts. That same Shekinah that appeared in the mercy seat, in the two cherubim, that same, we will never know what that really fully means. I suppose the only way is when we meet with Jesus. The light shines in our hearts, watch this, so we could know the glory of God that is seen in the face of Jesus Christ. When you come to Christ, the glory comes. The more you look into Jesus, the glory increases. However, the glory of God is also displayed in the gospel, the full gospel of Jesus Christ. The glory of God is always associated with power. And 1 Corinthians 1.18 says, For the message of the cross, it's foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, come on, it is the power of God. Today, we see the glory of God whenever the gospel of Jesus Christ is preached and the Holy Spirit is welcome, you'll see the glory. And the visible sign of God's glory today will be manifestations of salvation. Come on, healing, deliverance, provision. Let me tell you that when you are touched by the glory of God, you will never be the same again. Just think for a moment that the power of God's glory that rested upon the mercy seat in the Ark of the Covenant is the same glory that indwells a believer when they are baptized in the Holy Spirit. Now that's powerful. And it's evidence with a holy language called tongues. Come on, someone. If we say we believe we are full gospel Christians, we should also demonstrate our belief by actions. The kind of believing that doesn't change our lives is not really full gospel believing at all. If we are baptized in the Holy Spirit, let us live and walk in the Spirit. If we say we believe, let us put our faith into action. Let's be reflectors of God's glory. And you know, a good test 
as to whether we are above average, average or below average as a Christian is to ask yourself, what kind of church would it be if every member was just like me? Ask yourself that question. God's glory. God's glory. Thank God for a joyful wife. Hallelujah. Well, at least she's laughing and not crying. Glory to God. Stand to your feet, everyone. God's glory is God on display. And our job as the church is to create the environment when we gather together for God's glory to be on display through exalting Jesus, through our love, our worship, our holiness, our reverence, our unity, and our desire to please the Lord in the way we live. All we need is the glory of God. Lift your hands to heaven, everybody. Reach out this morning. Come on, if you need a miracle this morning, it's time to exercise your faith. I want you to come out of your seat, come to the altar with outstretched arms to heaven, believing 
pressing in as an act of faith you take that step and you come and we trust the glory of God to do what He has to do Hallelujah come come to the altar reverence Him Lift your hands to heaven, everyone. Worthy is a lamb. Worthy is a lamb. Keep pressing in this morning. I am not the miracle worker. Jesus is. You got to touch Jesus. Can I have the pastors on the platform, please? All the pastors. Every week we pray. Every week the intercessors are believing for miracles to manifest right where you're standing. That's the miracle runway. That's the realm. That's like the pool of Siloam. You got to get into it. That's your step of faith. You bring your request to Jesus right now. If you have unforgiveness in your life, repent of it. If you have sin, repent of it. I want everyone at the altar, lift your hands to heaven. Pray this prayer with me. Heavenly Father, forgive me of every negative action, word, thought, spoken against you or your people. Cleanse me with your precious blood. Wash me clean. I renounce rebellion and disobedience. I crucify my sinful self with its evil passions and desires. I lay it down at the altar here today. I seek You, Lord, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, Lord Jesus Christ. Come into my heart. Come into my life. I want to be saved. I want to be born again. I want to be touched by Your presence. I want to be touched by Your power. Today, in Jesus' Name, touch me, Lord. Right now.
forever. Reach your hands out. People in the congregation, reach your hands out. Praying in the Spirit. God is ministering to people right now. Jesus. Pastors, start praying. Start praying, pastors. Go right ahead. Reach out. Healing. 
healing, full wholeness, full restoration. Right now, no symptoms, all symptoms cease. Full recovery, full recovery in the name of Jesus right now. Right now, right now, keep it going, right now, right now. Thank you, Jesus. Take a big deep breath. Just breathe out right now. In Jesus' name, I command any spirit of oppression, get out. Get out now. Get out of the grief. Grief. Brokenheartedness. Get out now. You demon binding her emotions. I command you. You've been exposed. Now get out. Get out of her mind. Get out of the emotions. Leave now in Jesus' name and never return. Right now, right now, the blood of Jesus cleanses and heals and restores right now. Oh, oh Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Let the miracle manifest right now. Now, Lord, do it now. Do 
it today. In the name of Jesus. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Holy Spirit. Let the miracle manifest right now. In the name of Jesus. Fire, Lord. All through the body. Right now, right now. 
He breaks every chain. Fresh touch. Right now. He breaks every chain. Make sure you're here next Sunday. He breaks every chain. He breaks every chain. He breaks every chain. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Breaks every chain. Upon my brother's life right now. In Jesus' name. Lord, let Even holy fire right now burn within his spirit you never stop. You and ignite never stop fresh vision right now you never stop. You in the you name never of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, working. just lean forward. Just take a big deep breath. Just breathe out. I command that his spirit of oppression get out right now. Any spirit of disappointment, get out. Any spirit of grief, get out. Bring it out right now. Lord, I release a fresh touch. Fire all over me right now.
Holy Ghost. Flow, flow, Lord. Flow, flow right now. Right through her. Right through her. Right through her. Let the anointing flow right now. Holy Ghost, fire. going to ask um, Phil and Laura Lee if they have a word of knowledge for anyone here, prophetic word, or anyone online. The Spirit of God speaks to you. We share that right now. Let's look to the Lord for a prophetic word and word of knowledge. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. The lady here, in the, can I pray for you? Anne. Thank you, Lord, for Anne. Hmm. And God says this is a new day for you. This is a day of increase. This is a day of breakthrough. And even as you lay hold it, God says I'm not, you know, there's, there's going to be a, a strength and capacity to go forward and not look back any longer. And, and I'm going to cause even those things that, that seem like had fallen away, those things that seem like they dropped away, God says I'm causing the revival. I'm causing the breakthrough. I'm causing the increase. And I'm going to cause you by my spirit to lay hold of those things that seem to have been stolen and taken from you but God says I give you life I give you life and I'm going to cause even that the, where the enemy has come to rob financially where the enemy has come to rob relationships where the enemy has come to rob from you God says I'm bringing the overflow not just enough not just enough any longer it's like you you've settled for the not just enough and God says I'm causing you to come into the increase. I'm causing you to come into the overflow and I'm causing my my hand to lift you up into a higher place. Hallelujah. I'm causing you to be lifted higher to see from that stronger, higher perspective and no longer will you be able to fall down. God, you've been afraid that you're going to fall down. God says, right now, we're releasing that higher place to you and causing you to come into that strength and capacity. We release it to end now in Jesus' name. Oh, Thank hallelujah. you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, there's someone here, and I believe you're in business, and, and the end of the financial year is a crit, critical date for you. I just believe that God wants to speak into that. Who's that one? God wants to speak to you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We thank you for Rockma. Mm. Yeah, the Lord would say this is a critical time and this is a time of preparation, a time of planning and a time of, of looking ahead. It's not a look, time to look behind but a time to look ahead and I see it's a, uh, uh, it's a time of, of really casting the vision forward for what you want, casting the vision forward and God, is, God is, has been speaking to you about certain aspects of what you're doing and, and there's some things that are quite critical and God is saying I have all that in hand and I'm shuffling things around in the background that you're not aware of 
and, and God would say that this is a time for you to trust. This is a time for you to just believe God. And, and, and uh, there's a renewing of the mind that's taking place right now. And Lord, we release your, yes. your uh, power and presence to him. Yes. Lord, we, we command those things to come into alignment that are not in alignment and, and to, to uh, just be the way they should be in the name of Jesus. Yes. And we come against anything that would try and hinder and hold back what you want to do for this. And we speak life into it now yes. in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise you, God. I actually just want to go back with the theme of business. I just feel like there's someone else. and you've, you've, It's like you've lost two businesses. And, and, and there's something in you that you've got to keep the fire going, but it's almost like, can I go forward? Who's that person that you feel like that you're, you're, you've meant, you're anointed, you're anointed for business, but you feel like you've, can I do this again? Who's that person? It's an entrepreneurial spirit. I'm getting the name, uh, I've got to go to some details here. I'm getting the name Derek. Someone here by the name of Derek. I sense you're in business. Who knows someone by the name of Derek? Could be someone online. Yeah, let's go with that. There's a, there's a, a Derek. I just believe that there's a business entrepreneurial that you feel like that you've. It's almost like there's actually there's a religious spirit. There's a religious spirit that's come to rob you from standing in that entrepreneurial anointing. And I just sense God saying, I've anointed you. I've anointed you as an entrepreneur. I've anointed you as one that would know how to create wealth, that would know how to, to see that transfer of wealth. And I'm actually repositioning you and causing you to stand in that place by my grace. Many around you will say it can't work. Many around you will say it, well, it's not possible. But God says, I'm making it possible. And as you realign, there's almost like you've been in two steps. You've been in two, two lanes, so to speak. And God says, as you align yourself in my lane and the way that I do it, God says, I'm going to cause you to come into a provision and that breakthrough and that, that multiplication, even that hundredfold return is speaking of in Genesis 26. That, you, that, that which you've sowed, you're going to see that, that reviving of the entrepreneurial spirit that I've put within you. Release that to you, Derek, now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Now, Derek, if you're watching that, could you please contact us? If that word spoke to you, Derek, contact us, send us an email or message us, info at awesomechurch.com. We want to hear from you, Derek. Hallelujah. There's someone here and you've got like, uh, you've got some sort of problem with your tongue. I don't know whether it's like a swelling or something, something's not right and it's causing... It's, it's causing some pain, but it's, it's more than that. It's, it's something else. Who's that one? God wants to heal you today. I'll take it home with them. Who's that one? Anyone here? Maybe someone online had a problem with your tongue? I'm just going to pray for you anyway. Lord, we just thank you for your healing power to flow. Father God, whatever it is with that tongue that's not right, we command it to come right. We speak healing in the name of Jesus. Yes. We release the healing power of God to flow into that person in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Um, just a lady in the second row. Um, I should know your name. Can I pray for you? Jenny, thank you, Lord, for Jenny. Uh, actually, this morning, the Lord spoke to me about talk, praying for Jenny today. Uh, thank you, Lord. Lord, we just release right now that increase that you have for Jenny. And, and God says that, that, uh, that there is a, a, a repositioning that's been taking place. It's, it's been taking place, but it's not finished yet. And I'm going to cause you to be repositioned even in that place of leadership, that place of authority, that place of taking dominion. There's some things that, that it's almost like, the, again, the enemy has tried to rob you from taking dominion because the doubt has come. But God says, I've given that to you. I, I birthed something within you 10 years ago. I birthed something within you and it's like it, that, there, it has been that, that resistance since. But God says, I'm causing you to come and take 
use the power of your words and take that dominion like never before and see that increase take place. See that, see that forthcoming. And it's like there's, there's certain aspects and there's certain people that you need to be calling in around about your life and, and laying hold, calling those things that be not as though they are and seeing the manifest form. It's like, you know, it's like you're a spiritual architect, you're a prophetic architect and you're going to see that thing build in the spirit first and you're going to simply walk in it from that that moment forward so release that to jenny now in jesus name hallelujah hallelujah i have a yes give god praise amen i have a word for someone online could be someone here but it's someone online it's someone by the name of Anne or agnes i think it's agnes but it could be Anne. Anne or agnes and it's a hip problem it's quite a quite a painful hip problem that you've got and the Lord is saying that he wants to heal you right now of that and just I want you to stand to your feet if you can and uh, just reach your hands to heaven and I can see you Agnes I, I believe it's Agnes Agnes or Anne and I pray right now father in the name of Jesus Christ you've shown me this dear woman Agnes Anne be healed in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, remove all the pain, all the inflammation, and all the stress. Let her body be into complete alignment right now. Francis, the woman by the name of Francis, you've just experienced a divorce and you've, you've shed many tears and you feel almost like giving up. But the Lord says, Francis, don't quit. And don't give up. I'm going to heal you. I'm going to restore you. Draw close to me now. Draw close to me. Get into the house of the Lord as soon as possible. And I will restore you, Francis. I will heal your heart. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Now, those people... Contact us. Please contact us. Info at awesomechurch.com or call our office wherever you are in the world and let us know because God loves you. God really loves you. Hallelujah. Our dear friends on the live stream, we're going to say goodbye to you now. God bless you. Next Sunday is our D-Day, Deliverance Day. I want to invite you if you're in Sydney or if you're interstate, get to church. Number four, Euston Street, Rydalmere at 10 a.m. It's going to be a very powerful service. D-Day, it's titled Binding the Strong Man. And I believe that we're going to see great miracles of freedom come to people's lives. So God bless you. Please join us when you're in Sydney next time. Church, let's all stand to our feet.